Hello everybody and welcome to this Gameware's first non-podcast related adventure. We are going to be taking a little look at uh, Planet Zoo over the, over the course of a few different um, videos actually. Um, because I've got a little project going on. Oh, it's Ashley by the way, for anyone that is uh, a podcast listener. And I, I've got a little project going on involving project uh, Planet Zoo. In which I'm going to be building Chester Zoo, Chester Zoo from uh, in the UK for anyone that's outside of the UK. Um, it's quite a famous zoo worldwide. It's also in in Britain. It's got a it's got a television program that shows everybody the inner workings of the zoo, and I thought it'd be a good way to learn the uh, systems of the game and also to be a little bit creative, but with with a bit of a a bit of a safety net I suppose because from what I know of Planet Coaster which is the previous Frontier Games uh, production and a lot of a lot of Planet Zoo is based on on um, on Planet Coaster all of the all of the ways that the building works from what I know of that it, it can be quite daunting um, sort of wading in and trying to turn your hand to the things while while learning the pro the processes of, of creation um, so I thought if I had something that I was somewhat familiar with, I, I'd be able to use that to, to support me in, in being creative, but also uh, working with something that's real. Um, so yeah, this is, this is where I am so far. I wanted to get so far into it before I showed everybody or, or started, started these videos, because um, just the amount of time it's been taking me to, to do things, I, I think it's quite a lot longer than maybe it should, but... Uh, this is where we are. It's, this is actually to to put that into context. This is about twenty hours work. About yeah, about twenty hours work putting what I've got done already together. Um, and a lot of that, most of that, in fact, went on these two front buildings, um, which were the thing the thing that I did first. You can find these if you are playing Planet Zoo. Um, you can find these on the workshop. They're they're called Chester Zoo Entrance, and it includes these two buildings here, um, and then this this building here which can be per repurposed as a, an information stand um well i say repurposed that actually is what it is in the, in the zoo uh, and then this building here which you probably if you've been playing you'll recognize that that is a toilet um building that i've taken from the game just to just to now just for now to fill the fill the gap um because i was getting a bit i, I wanted to move on and get some animals after 20 hours of building, I wanted to get some animals in into the zoo, so uh, that's what I did. Um, and these are our first animals here, right? um, our our elephants. Now, if you know Chester Zoo, then you'll know that Chester Zoo's got six elephants. At the moment, I am short a few elephants, but there is a reason for that. So this is our our big male, uh, Angbo. Angbo is actually, I think, Angbo is 19 years old. So I did pretty good getting hold of this this particular animal because he is 18.7 years old um and hopefully i'll be able to make use of him this is ty uh who is another one of the elephants and sundara and i think i've got another one somewhere let's see if i can find her She's possibly inside oh sorry janky camera yeah there you go so um this is our fourth uh elephant i picked her up yesterday maya um i've tried to get as close to the ages of the animals that that actually are in the zoo um but i obviously you're limited as to what you can get in the animal trading so i've 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 had to choose the best fits and there there aren't yet maya this one is supposed to be uh 54 i think um and obviously this this particular animal is only only 31 but you know what you, you can only do what you can do so i i've given you a very quick fly over of of the zoo as i was showing you those bits um but i'm gonna show you a few more details just um just a little bit in in more detail a few more details in more detail um and talk you through uh the decisions that were made so um, I've re reorientated. If you look at the Chester Zoo in real life, if you looked out that way, 
there wouldn't be all these trees. There would be a car park. In fact, I can show you that. Just one second. Um, if I pop that up. So there is the entrance as is. Forgive me uh, for that. That was an accident. There's the entrance. And if you turn around, there's the car park. So that's what you see otherwise. But you can't build out of bounds on, on Planet Zoo. So that's one of the limitations um, that you, you have to work within. Oh, God, the van. I don't know what Google were thinking when they did this, but that van is quite annoying. Let me just get back to where we need to be. Uh, so the entrance. The, the entrance is where I started, and I actually started with the buildings. This is the, this is the building on the left behind the elephant, ticket office and gift shop. And this is a membership and adoptions place. So if you were wanting to, um, if you were wanting to adopt an animal in the zoo, then that's where you'd go. Um, so that's what it looks like in real life. This little sort of plaza. I think this is called the Jubilee Plaza uh, at the zoo, and it was it was made for one of the Queen's Jubilees. I don't know which one. I should have found out. Shit, really, shouldn't I? Um, so that's that's it in real life. Um, if we go back over to the to the game, just bear with me. If you go back over to the game, um, this is our this is our plaza in the game. So I'll take it back down, back round to the front. Uh, this is actually the second attempt at the at the plaza. Um, it started off with this building because it was it was it, well it is quite a strange shape. If we have a look from the top, um, it's sort of a a horseshoe shape and again if I show you that same view from above on here this is this building here um, so from above I, I think it's I think it's pretty good it the only thing that I'm not happy with is that it's it's not as wide as it should be I've I've taken the measurements of all of these buildings and the width from here to here is 46 meters for anyone that doesn't know um, you can take measurements in in Google Maps using the measurement tool so uh, yeah for 44 to 46 and uh, meters from it, it at its widest um, or thereabouts and then translating that into the game was not as straightforward as as you think I I used um, I used boundaries so barriers um, if you look down hang on a second if you look down at the bottom here here uh, I use barriers because barriers make it easier to um, measure things out. They you can you can change because you can change the length of a barrier. Um, I was sort of changing it into twenty meters and then placing down a twenty meter block and then a, a, and then a thirty five. Uh, sorry, I was using twenty meter lengths of fence uh to measure out my distances so it would be two 20 meters plus a small five meter section for that 45 meter width and then it was 35 meters from uh back to front so i would do similar and you'd end up with like a graph a, a set of bars to to measure your build against um and then i was building it next to that um unfortunately it doesn't seem to translate um from real world to uh to game Per absolutely perfectly but that that is what it is and uh, it's part of the challenge actually of of doing it you you just do your best with what you with the tools you've got i guess um so yeah it was it was a challenge because of its shape um if you can if you look you can see that there are these two front walls and a bit round the back they are um they're curved um again if i was to show you that on the on the building you can't see it from above but if you look at it from the front, you, you sort of can see it here and you can see it here. Um, so yeah, building the curves, I think curves in this game are one of the more challenging aspects because everything's fairly straight except for the curved buildings, with, uh, the curved building pieces, which don't always fit to the plan that you, you have. So I have used a curved building piece here, but then the whole of the roof is uh, pieces that I built and then tried to orientate so that they have a somewhat curved appearance. So it's not perfect by any by any stretch of the the imagination, but it's it's as close as I could get. And this was the first thing that I did. Um, 
in the game. Literally the first thing that I did. So most people, my wife included, would have <laughs> booted this game up and thrown some tigers or some lions into into some exhibit. Um, I <laughs> I built a ticket office and gift shop. I don't know what that says about me. Uh, so yeah, actually, one of the most challenging parts of, of doing this was actually building the roof. I started off just using um, plastic, you know, corrugated plastic like on the top here, and I just placed it down uh, flat. But the, the actual, the effect wasn't right. It just didn't look anything like the uh, the Chester Zoo front, front building. So what I ended up doing was creating a section like this. So it's a... Um, it's an eight meter width uh, section, so two four meters. Or well, actually, it's four two meter um, glass pieces. And then I've taken. Let's go into the group so we can see what they actually definitely are called. So vertical wooden planks, two of those four meters long, uh, placed um, diagonally. And then the glass modern roof panel piece. It's a rectangle. It's the only rectangle in in the building kit, I think unfortunately um, and that's why I've used it otherwise I would have used something opaque because it it I mean it kind of works what I what I've done is yeah I, I think it works anyway um, so there's those and then on top is a, a pair of corrugated plastic roof pieces and then inside I've I haven't done the floor yet. I've I've just sanded it over because the floor is quite a light colour. Inside in real life, this is actually kind of what it looks like. It's got sort of beams across, and then there's it's quite an industrial roof if you look at it. Um, so that's what I've tried to go with there. I've also rounded out the um, ticket office on the inside so that it gives it a more of a more of a shape, more of a real shape. Uh, that's a rubbish way of saying. <laughs> what I'm trying to say but basically to to reduce the amount of space in this gift shop because it's not as big as as it was um, in real life it's not as big as it, as it was in the game after I'd built it um, so yeah the roof the roof was the most difficult piece of this build um, mainly because you as I said to you you can't get rounded pieces to work the way that you want them so you have to sort of improvise a little bit. I've seen other people do this, um, but this particular one, because it wasn't circular, you can't just, you, you weren't able, I wasn't able to, I'm sure someone else that, that knows the game much better than me, you, I couldn't just um, pop two down opposite each other and spin them round to make some kind of circle. I had to, I had to hand place these pieces all around the edge. Um, so that was, yeah, that was the biggest challenge of of this of this particular aspect of the of the build. Once I'd done all of that, though, because this is actually the second version of this building. The the first version of the building was too small, um, too squat, and I hadn't taken real measurements on the map. Um, it it was just too small. It didn't look as impressive as it as it want as I wanted it to. Um, but I'm actually I'm quite happy with the way that this has has turned out. Um, there are compromises, but the compromises will this this project will be full of compromises. So we'll just have to deal with them. Um, so the planting round round the front here. If you again, if I take you over to the front of the building in real life, this is how it looked previously. It doesn't actually look like this anymore, and I've only I only realised that after. After I'd done it, because I I've been working from sort of three different types of source, I guess. The first source is my own memory. We've been to Chester Zoo, so I remember generally how things are. But then to get the details and to make sure I'm on the right track, I've been using uh, Google Maps and Google Earth um, to get top-down views and and uh, per point of view, per uh, human eye views. Of, of the place and it's it's done me pretty well but things like this where you've got this grass and what a, I think red hot pokers here I've I've made that and then realized that like last year it wasn't anything like this but even so I still think that it it works quite well in the game um, the the gates are probably the the least 
satisfying element, I think, of this build to me. If you if you look at their gates and then compare them to mine, uh, I know I know that they're not they're not what they are in real life, are they? If we if we have a look, I've done I've done what I can. I don't know if you can get numbers. I still haven't found any large numbers that I can place here. But if I find some, then I will be coming back and replacing these signs. But at the moment, it's just like a a representation. Um, I I'm going to come back to all of this, and I'm going to uh, sort of pretty it up a little bit more as as I learn new things. Um. But yeah, that is that is where I was. I was quite happy with this. I think I did quite a good job personally. Um, I I was quite happy with what I did with this door as well because I wanted it to be opaque. Um, so I placed a a black wall behind it and then um, a modern piece of uh, glass glass work on the front. Um, and then if we come in through the gates, so this is this is the other side of of the building. They're quite weird shapes, which was was a good place to start because it made me have to uh, think about how things go together and I was having to nudge things. So you see that? I'm not particularly happy with that corner wall. I probably need to redo that. But I was having to nudge things around and hand place a lot of stuff and uh, work out how to solve problems to make things look at least good from ground view because I'm can. i am, I'm trying to imagine all of this from, from down below. So this, is, this corner here, that is one of the things that I I sort of I, it is a bodge it's not perfect but there was a big gap here and I didn't like the gap so I um, I filled it in with a, a geometric piece a, a triangular geometric piece and it it kind of looks a bit chunky from <laughs> from this angle but when you look at it from below it, it looks pretty good and I you know it's the sort of thing that you would see on on a building like this you know like a raised corner sort of Thing. The only problem is it doesn't quite match the eaves that I've I've used here. It would be nice if I could have this sort of flat matte white all all along, but I again I haven't figured out. Well, I haven't found any pieces that would allow me to do that. So I've done what I can. Um, this is a this is a piece from the game, so I'm I'm definitely going to have to come back and and do something with that. Build something a little bit more bespoke. Uh, so this is the oh look at that so this is guest services I've started filling out guest services here this is I, I can't remember who made this set but this is a set of text uh, letters lettering that somebody's made out of gutter pieces of all things um, I think it looks quite good um, I, I will put the name of the person down in the description so that you if you want to grab those you can go and find them as well um, but yeah, it, again, if we if we come over to the map and we have a little look at this plaza section, so we are currently sort of standing about there, I think. And this is guest services in real life. This is guest services in my this is guest services in real life, and this is guest services in the in the game. It needs work. I know it needs work. Oh, hello. Um, and I will bring, I will come back to it and and do the work that it needs. Uh, but for now, it, it is what it is, and I think it's pretty good. The roof was a pain in the backside, and I think that's the thing that I'm least happy with. So, like, there are edges sticking out over over the top here. I thought I'd I'd managed to get those a bit more hidden than that, but I will I will come back to it because actually, I did figure out. A bit more about the grid while I was building another building so uh, th this here this is all temporary this was just so that I could get the elephants in I'm gonna be finding ways to hide these away um, in inside buildings and and whatnot um, but for now I just needed to have all of those so that I could get my elephants in uh, this is the elephant house so that it has a name I can't remember what the name is um, but for now, again, this is a somewhat semi-temporary building. I've I've done all of the layout for it. There is a big here. There's a big cover that slopes back down here, and it makes the building quite a strange sort of squared off. Well, not squared off. Sort of. It comes up here, comes along there, down there, and the, the shelter bit is here, and then back up there. 
um, and I need to add that. I think looking at it, the the textures, the um, the material choices for the wall is probably not right. So I'm going to do a bit of um, messing around with this to, to try and make it look more like the building. There, it, it's quite an eclectic building. It's got glass. It's got what I think is copper on the top. But I've used the copper anyway. And then there's some corrugated green plastic um, on on this side, which I have started doing here. These are metal planks. They were the best simulation that I could get of of the green plastic. Um, I don't know if you can... Can you colour them? I've just forgotten to colour them. Let's have a look. No, you can't colour them, so I might have to rethink that. Um, and then along the edges here are opaque glass. As well as on the top, I've got the greenhouse filter glass. Um, this, again, if you look at it from above, is the... I think it's a pretty good simulation of what is actually going on here. If we go back to the game, I'll show you what we've got in the game. So from above, it looks like that, which if you go back and have a look at the map, I think that's pretty good. Uh, here is going to need some more work, so I'm going to have to do a bit of roof, roof work here um, to make it look more like it. And I, I'd like, I'd kind of like to get some dirt or something that looks a bit dirty. To pop, to pop into this channel here. Um, yeah, it's actually... This is also their shelter. It's massive, really. Uh, if we if we go inside... If you've been to Chester Zoo, you'll know that this fencing isn't quite... Well, it's not right at all. I I will, again, come back to this at some point and I'll, I'll make it look more like it does in the real world. But uh, for now, I just wanted to get the animals in, get some get some shelter and get a fair if inaccurate representation of of what their indoor ex area looks like um, it needs prettying up it needs things added to it um, at this point I was just I just really wanted to to get the building usable um, and that is going to be the next thing that I work on outside uh, again I've had to make a few sa uh, compromises within the system of the game because uh, if you look at so again if we go and have a look at the zoo itself if you look i mean you can tell from there there's barely any green in there that there's a bit of green something there i'm not really sure what it is and then if you actually look at the look at it from person height from person view let's just walk over there bear with me If we go and be a, a viewer you can see that it's not it's not got grass yet the game has required me to to add grass uh, as a as a terrain because it wanted it the, the animals needed it in order to be happy and I'm I'm trying to balance the welfare of the animals in the game with the reality of of what it looks like so I think I've done again a fair a fair attempt at that um, in the real zoo this is along here is a raised walkway and I'm gonna put that in um, and then I'm gonna dress this up with rocks so that it looks a bit more like it it does but say we're on a raised walkway um, if you go and have a look say on on a on the on a video um, that you might be able to find on YouTube or something if you look at this view here it's actually fairly accurate if things are slightly out so this this needs building up it needs to be taller um, I need to work on my placement of these water uh, effects as well um, but for the most part it looks pretty good I, I think anyway um, if we just do a quick fly through I've put some nettles along the edges because I thought that was you know quite accurate to the way things would be there's an azalea here that's straddled the the fence that's sort of grown through the fence uh, some more nettles a few bits and bobs um, a mud bank a, a mud pit whatever you want to call it in in the front so people can see them bathing um, yeah so and and the planting the planting they don't like a lot of these trees 
but if you look at the trees in their real habitat in it's not in their habitat in their real enclosure in the real zoo um these are closer to what they've actually got in there than than the trees that it wanted so i I've, I've stuck with them uh and they don't seem too unhappy about it so that's that's not too bad let's just have a look at what his happiness is so this is angbo uh his welfare is 84 percent, so it can't be that bad can it really uh, if but then if you look at Oh, you see, I need slightly more coverage. I've got 10 and... No, I've got 11 and they want a little bit more. But it, it, it's not very well covered. What I'm thinking is if I... In, in real work, in real life, it's not really that well covered. But there is a lot of planting, like dress planting, along here in in the actual zoo. So I'll maybe be able to add some plants along here to, to increase coverage. I haven't got that much to work with, though, have I? In terms of, like, I might have to add more than, more than they're happy with. But we'll... We'll see what we can do with that. The um, hooked thorn acacia they don't like. Brambles which are behind me on the on the barrier. Um, broken white birch. I've popped one of those in uh, in that larger piece of planting here. Uh, black poplar tree over there. Common ash tree. Oh, I can't. oh yeah, it tells you, doesn't it? So over there. Um, and they're not fans of those, but it's clearly not affecting them too much, which is which is fine by me. So I am missing, I've got four elephants, the, the real zoo has six. Uh, the ones I'm missing are the youngsters because you can't, you can't adopt, you can't adopt the youngsters. So I need Indali, who is a, a female four years old, and Anjan, who is a two year old male. Um, I'm gonna try and breed those from, uh, and hopefully if I've got the right animals, I, I don't know because a couple of them have died uh, in recent years of the herpes virus that the that, um, that elephants are affected by uh, but if I've got the, the right parents I'm going to try and breed from the correct parents so that the lineages actually match up as well um, yeah so so that's what I've got so far um, these buildings as I said are going to go uh, I'm pretty happy with it the next stage if we go back to the map the Oh, the bird's eye map. Let's have a look at the bird's eye view. So the next stage. Oh, that's the other thing that I'm going to show you. So this is the frontage of the zoo along here. And I have built this section here with the exception of some of the buildings. I'm going to I'm going to work on these buildings. Probably not next because I'm, I'm a bit worn out from from doing the frontage, the, the, the entrance itself. But I'm going to work along from this this line here. I'm going to work along to the to the right. So these sections, these enclosures, are going to be the next things that I look at doing. Um, but I'm going to stop here uh, along this line. I'm going to I'm going to sort of trace that triangle. I'm going to build everything in it, and then probably start branching out to this side because this is where some of the more interesting animals live as well. So I'll be able to get those in. In regards to any animals that the zoo has that the game doesn't have, I'm still gonna build the enclosures and either leave them empty or put in something that is close to um, what actually exists in the game, in the in the zoo. The The problem that we've got is that there are thousands of animals in the, in the game, in the zoo, um, hundreds of species, and a lot of them aren't represented in the game. So hopefully that will change. It, it would be, I mean, it would be really helpful to me if, if they were to do a Chester Zoo tie-in, that would be great. Some Chester Zoo DLC where loads of the animals are um, are put in. The other, so yeah, I said the other thing that I wanted to show you. I have done all the accurate measurements, as I said, and one of the accurate measurements that I've tried to do is this: the way that this comes up here. I've tried to represent that, that in the game. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you the orientation. So if we go back into here, what I what I did was use barriers again to measure the distances, the lengths of the front of the park, um, and this little cutout bit where there's in in real world there's um, a roundabout here, and then I created this fence. I got all the angles sort of right um, for the fence, and then I lined it up as best as I could with the front of the of the zoo. Uh, similarly, on this side, if you look, there's like a yard 
next to this next to the ticket office. So I've built the uh, wall for the yard, and then I've also angled this so that it comes down to represent the actual angles of of um, of the real world zoo, the real world boundaries of the zoo. Uh, and I've done I've done that all the way to the edge. So these again, as I say, these aren't these aren't permanent structures. They're just there to help me to gauge the size of the zoo, the positioning of everything. The zoo itself, the real world zoo, should actually fit in into this entire space. So I think the game works with something like a one kilometer square um, of space. And then, what's that? I thought I deleted everything over here. Oh, it's an errant window. Okay, that was... I. So I'm building in in open space, and then I'm moving things into into position as as they get finished. Um, yes, yeah, so it's a one kilometer one uh, one kilometer square area in the game, and the zoo doesn't stretch beyond that um, in either direction. It's it's quite an unusual shape. I'll, I'll try and map out the shape completely, but the front, in terms of what the front looks like, in terms of these, in terms of these. And those over there, um, they are fairly accurate, and we'll try our, we'll try to keep to every everything being accurate to the real world as best we can. Uh, you know, there's going to be compromises, as I said. So yeah, if um, if this is a project that you're interested in, you can you can get hold of this entrance way on the workshop. What's happened to me building there? Look, oh my gosh. Look at that. <laughs> so, I don't know how that's happened. I, I deleted this window over here, but it's clearly tied into... Yeah, so it's attached to here. So, I'm going to have to detach it. I'll do that after. How about that? Um, if you're interested in this project, you can get hold of this building, this sequence of buildings, the, the guest services, the front entrance, which can be used as a gift shop and such. Um, on the workshop, um, I'm called this game where the the um, on on Steam that is. Uh, I'm called this game where, so if you can find me on there, the entrance is is attached to my my username. Um, so you can download that. I'm gonna put this on here, but I need to find a way. I'm gonna put the elephant house on as well when it's finished, but I need to find a way for people to be able to recreate the boundaries accurately and I've not figured out how to do that yet. I'm, I'm wondering whether to just run some nettles all the way around for the purposes of people tracing it. Um, if you've got any ideas on how, how I might do that better then um, please do let me know in the comments or, or something like that or come over to our Facebook page. Um, we do Please do subscribe as well on the on the YouTube channel because you will then be able to keep up to date with what I am uh, building and you'll be able to see things as I'm building them. Um, I am going to do some build videos so that you, you can watch and we are going to start streaming at some point. I'm just not sure when because all of this is new to me um, and I'm learning as I go along. So yeah, if you if you, um, if you want to ask any questions, ask them in the comments. Please like and subscribe the video. That will help us a lot. And come over to our our Facebook page, facebook.com this uh, forward slash this game where, or our Twitter, twitter.com forward slash this game where. The podcast, I'm going to link all these in the description, but the podcast can be found at thisgamewhere.podbean.com or on iTunes or Radio Public or whichever um, podcast service you use. Please do come and give us a listen. We aren't talking about Planet Zoo yet. But we we talk about lots of different games, mostly mostly sort of from the 90s at the moment. But um, there's going to be they come out every two weeks. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm going to stop rambling now um, and let you all go. Uh, thanks for sticking with me if you if you're still watching this. Um, and and yeah, I hope to see you again uh, and hear from you on our various uh, spaces. Thank you. See you later. <laughs>